Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we'll be covering the section F, Acids, Alkalis and Titrations of the section 2 in Organic Chemistry of Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry. Now in this video, we'll be covering the specification 2.28 till 2.32 and in this video, we'll be looking over how we can distinguish between acids and alkaline solutions how we can find the difference between acids and alkaline solution in terms of pH scale, the indicators, we'll look over the use of universal indicators, and we'll also see what are the various ways in which we can define acids and alkali, and we'll be also looking over some neutralization reaction. Now, I would recommend you to watch this video till the end, because in the end, as always, we'll have some important key terms of this topic and we'll also look over some conceptual questions. So let's begin. Let's come on to a chemical reactions of acid, bases and alkali. Now let's have a little bit key stage 3 brush up. How do we define acids? These are the substances which have pH less than 7. Bases are the substances with the pH greater than 7. Acids are strong or weak. Strong acids are those acids which are completely dissolved in water to release H+. For example, hydrochloric acid dissociates into H+, and Cl-, and we represent it with a single arrow as it is a strong acid and completely dissociated, no reverse reaction. pH is between 1 and 3. The weak acids are the ones which are partially dissociated to release H plus ions. For example, vinegar, which is CH3COOH, it gets... Uh, dissociated into CH3CO minus plus H plus pH is in the range of 5 and 7. Now these are the four acids you need to remember for your spec with their formulas. So hydrochloric acid is HCl, sulfuric acid is H2SO4, nitric acid is HNO3 and phosphoric acid is H3PO4. On the other hand, how do you uh, give an example of a base? So remember all the metal oxides, hydroxides and carbonates are base. So if you remember from the periodic table unit, all the elements to the left of the periodic table are metal so you can pick any one metal from the left side let's say lithium so lithium oxide hydroxide carbonate sodium oxide sodium carbonate sodium sulfate potassium oxide carbonate sulfate these are all bases now there's another term that is often used for metal hydroxides which are alkalis now what are alkalis alkalis are nothing but the bases that can dissolve in water and make a solution. So we can say soluble bases are alkalides and they release hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. For example, group one and group two hydroxides. Okay, now how would you distinguish between acids and bases? So to distinguish between acids and bases, we use something called the indicators. Now indicators could be a pH meter, which will give you colors or the pH probe, which will give you the pH reading. If the pH between 0 to 6, that is an acidic. As the pH decreases, acidity increases. As the pH increases, basicity increases. 7 is neutral, which is pure water or your salt. Second, you can have these universal indicator strips. When you dissolve it in acids and bases, they give you these range of colors and you can see it with the pH charts. If you see a color in the range of reddish, orange, they are highly acidic greenish yellow, weak acid, green or weak base and dark purple or blue highly basic. Okay, now let's tabulate the difference between acids and bases. Acids have pH less than 7. They taste sour. They are not soapy. They have a pungent smell. They ionize to give hydrogen ions and they turn blue litmus red. Example, hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. Bases have the pH greater than 7, they taste bitter, they feel soapy, they do not have a pungent smell, they give hydroxide ions, they turn red litmus blue, example sodium hydroxide. Now let us look at the reactions of acids and bases. Now remember acids and bases form salt and water and this is a neutralization reaction but you should know how to name the salt. Now, to name the salt, each salt has two components, a metal and an acid. Now, metal will be present in your base and acid name will 
determine the end name of the salt so for example if you're using a hydrochloric acid your salt name should end in chloride if you're using sulfuric acid it should end in sulfate and nitric acid should end in nitrate for example sodium hydroxide is a base because sodium is a metal so metal hydroxide is a base and a hydrochloric acid now it will form salt and water so for salt and water the rule is take the metal so metal is sodium and see the acid the acid is hydrochloric acid so it should make a chloride salt so it's sodium chloride and water potassium oxide and sulfuric acid metal is potassium sulfuric acid make a sulfate salt so it's potassium sulfate and water magnesium hydroxide is magnesium nitrate plus water calcium carbonate is calcium sulfate plus water just a little thing you need to remember if you have a carbonate you will have an evolution of a carbon dioxide gas rest salt and water the rule for salt is the same so i hope you can now name the salt from your name of the acids and bases now in the exam they can ask you to write the word equation for the word equation you need to look back my bonding uh, video where i have explained to you how you need to make the formulas of the ionic compounds so sodium hydroxide is naoh which will react with hcl and it will give you sodium chloride and water which is already balanced potassium is in group 1 oxygen has a charge of 2 so the formula would be k2o plus sulfuric acid and it will form potassium sulfate which is k2so4 because sulfate has a charge of 2 minus potassium has plus 1 plus water magnesium hydroxide formula is mgoh2 plus nitric acid hno3 it form magnesium nitrate which is mgno3 twice why because nitrate has a charge of minus 1 magnesium has a charge of 2 plus so when we criss cross we get mgno3 twice plus two water molecules and the last calcium carbonate calcium carbonate is caco3 sulfuric acid is h2so4 they react to form calcium sulfate plus water plus co2 okay so you should know how to write the balanced chemical equation and how to name the salts okay so i hope this is clear to you now let's summarize reactions of the acid if you have a metal and an acid you don't have any oxygen in it you get salt plus hydrogen for example sodium plus hydrochloric acid will make a sodium chloride plus hydrogen okay so you can balance this like this metal oxide plus acid gives salt and water metal hydroxide and acid gives salt and water metal carbonate gives salt and water plus carbon dioxide so everything is salt and water just with carbonate you have a carbon dioxide and if you have just a metal there's no water it's an hydrogen and you need to remember the test for hydrogen it's a squeaky pop test as for my always advice what's the next step check this specification make sure everything is there which is there in your specification for c5 is crystal clear to you and then do exam question on this topic they can all be found on my website the link is mentioned on the description box below all these answers of these key terms are also mentioned on my website along with the notes the link is mentioned in the description box below if you still have any doubts in this topic please feel free to ask me i have a 24/7 chat support on my website till your exam where you can come and ask any queries and get instant reply or you can leave a comment below we'll reply you as soon as possible if there's any specific video on any topic of your choice you want me to put a video on then also leave a comment below i'll make sure i have that up before your exam okay so if you like this video then do like comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do click the bell icon so that you get notified with all the upcoming videos because i'll be uploading loads of videos before your exam okay so i'll see you next in my next video till then happy revising